If you've spent a decent amount of time on the internet, then you've probably heard someone talk about their IP address. However, most people only have a very basic understanding of what an IP or internet protocol address is. So, what is an IP and what do they do? Every computer on the internet has a unique number assigned to it, which is its IP. Phones, tablets, and other devices have IPs too, so it's not just laptops and desktop computers. Without a unique IP, your machine would not be able to communicate with any other machines over the internet. For example, when watching this video, your device is sending its IP to your router, which sends it to different machines, eventually ending up at a YouTube server. Then, the server sends back the information required to play the video. You can relate your IP address to your phone number. Both can communicate to you and only you. There are two types of IP addresses that can be used on your network. The most commonly used of these two is IPv4 or Internet Protocol Address version 4. The reason IPv4 addresses are used more commonly is because most routers are configured for it. IPv4s are 32-bit addresses, which means there can be a total of 4,294,967,296 different addresses used. However, due to the popularity of the internet and people owning multiple devices, there have been concerns that the pool of IPv4 addresses will be used up in the near future. This is where IPv6 addresses come into play. These new addresses would allow 128-bit IPs rather than the 32-bit IPs that IPv4s allow. So that would eradicate any concerns about running out of IPs anytime soon. However, please be aware that I will be mainly focusing on IPv4 addresses in this video. IPs can either be static or dynamic. Static IPs never change as they serve as a permanent internet address. Static IPs also contain information such as the continent, country, region, and the city in which your machine is located. Static IPs are generally better for tasks such as multiplayer games where computers need to easily connect to each other. Dynamic addresses are temporary and are assigned each time a computer accesses the internet. In essence, they are borrowed from a pool of IPs shared among various computers. Since there are a limited amount of static IPs, many ISPs or internet service providers reserve a portion of their IPs for their subscribers' machines to use. This lowers costs all around and allows the ISPs to service far more customers than they could using static IPs. Additionally, static IPs are somewhat less secure than dynamic addresses. This is because they are easier to track than dynamic addresses, and they always remain the same rather than constantly changing. If you, for example, bring your laptop down the street to a coffee shop, it will not have the same IP as it has at your home. When you connect to the Wi-Fi at the coffee shop, the laptop is given a different, temporary IP. It is assigned by the coffee shop's ISP. Thanks to the genius design of the internet, this all happens without you having to do anything. Every IPv4 address consists of 4 numbers, and every IPv6 address consists of 8 numbers, all of which are 1 to 3 digits long. All of the numbers are separated by a single period. Each of the digits can be any number from 0 to 255. This representation of an IP is known as decimal notation. Out of all the IPv4 addresses possible, there are 3 IPs that are reserved for special purposes. One of these IPs is 0.0.0.0 and refers to the default network. 255.255.255.255 is also reserved and is known as the broadcast address. This address is for routing, which is a set of protocols that data follows in order to travel across multiple networks from its source to destination. The last one is 127.0.0.1. This is known as the loopback address. It refers to your own machine, so when you try to access this IP, you will be trying to access your own machine. This will result in an error unless you're running a web server. There are some guidelines that IPv4 addresses must still follow, however. As previously stated, IPv4 addresses can only include numbers between 0 and 255. 0.0.0.0 .0 and 255.255.255.255 are unusable IPs. And finally, two computers connected to the same network cannot have the same IP. If two computers did have the same IPs, those computers would have an IP conflict. This means that the two computers won't be able to communicate with each other. IPs can be grouped into classes. These classes are A, B, C, D, and E. Each of these classes have certain number ranges. All of the starting addresses have a number in the first place, followed by zeros. Similarly, each of the final addresses have a number in the first place, followed by two five fives. The starting address of A starts with zero, and the final address starts with one two six. Because I don't want to read a whole bunch of numbers for the next five minutes, I'll just put the starting and final addresses on the screen now. As you may have observed by looking at this chart, the IPs in class A and class B skip any IPs starting with one two seven. This is because, as previously stated, one two seven point zero point zero point one is the loopback address, so it cannot be used as an IP. So those are the basics of what an IP is. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like on it, it would really mean a lot, as this video took me a lot of work when it comes to writing the script and editing. If this topic interests you, make sure to research it more, it's really interesting. 
uh, this video couldn't cover it all because it's obviously such a big wide topic, but I tried to explain it as best as I could. So until next time, thanks for watching.